Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this learning loop. Uh, you know, it's an exciting but a challenging time to be a missionary. And as pioneers, a, a lot of the missional problems we face are new and don't have easy or clear solutions or tracks laid from the way we've done things before. And so this semester, we have four times set aside to help focus and equip staff with ideas and skills for, for today's ministry context. Last time, if you were able to join us, we talked about using digital tools to find and connect with law students, both in person and virtual contexts. If you didn't have a chance to join that time, uh, the recording of the, of the session is, is on EA staff web. So I invite you to check that out. Uh, you know, as apostle missionaries and, and evangelists, part of the way that we serve the body of Christ is to sit on the front lines of missional challenges, especially in the areas of evangelism, spiritual multiplication, and sending, and move toward missional problems to bless the whole body of Christ. That, that's, that's part of what we do as apostle missionaries. And so learning loops, once again, are, are designed to facilitate conversations that move us forward in challenging aspects of ministry. Um, and so as we do these learning loops, you'll see this done in a variety of ways over the course of the semester and, and the school year. And so what we're trying to do is, is simply identify some of the right problems to tackle, uh, shine a spotlight on some best practices, and, and to make a, an investment in your ministry tool belt to help further equip you in your calling to, to launch gospel movements. And so once again, maybe sometimes these learning loops will introduce a new thought or a, a tool or a method, something that's really brand new for you, but that's not necessarily the goal. Uh, maybe something will strike you as revolutionarily useful, uh, but really these learning loops are conversations among people who are identifying missional opportunities and challenges and taking steps of faith and learning from them. Uh, now, if you've joined us in the past, you know that we have a high desire for your questions and your interaction to drive these conversations. So audience engagement is a big part of these calls. And to do that, uh, we're going to use a tool called Menti. Uh, so you might be familiar with it already. So go ahead and pull out your phones and go to menti.com and use the code that you, you see on your screen here. And doing that will allow you to submit questions as our presenter is talking, and will also allow you to see what others are asking and upvote the questions that you want to see prioritized. And so I invite you to keep checking back um, with the questions. Um, even if you don't have any of your own, go check out what other people are asking and see if you want to upvote something. And so just to try this out this morning, uh, before we even start asking questions of our presenter, uh, we actually have a, a multiple choice question. And so again, if you're go to menti.com, enter that code, you'll see the opportunity to answer a multiple choice question. Uh, and you'll see three choices, um, a kind of a multiple choice with three, three possibilities. And so as you look at it, uh, answer, which of those three would you identify as, as your biggest felt gap? I need ways to uh, connect with more people, filter for spiritual interests, have ongoing gospel conversations. Uh, great. I see some answers coming in there. And um, really, kind of no matter where you're at and kind of that flow, um, we hope that that today's learning loop will will meet you um, either in a way that you have a need right now or a need that that you anticipate having in the future. Um, so once again, that that mentee uh, Q and A is is open, and uh, so you'll see just an open Q and A, and that's. You can start using it right now, even as our presenter begins to share. And uh, we'll move to audience questions um, a little bit later and try to keep this really interactive. So today's focus uh, for our learning loop is, is on how to maximize events, whether in person or virtual, to find spiritual seekers and have meaningful gospel conversations that continue. Uh, and we're going to do that by highlighting one type of event called story of the soul. Uh, and so here to introduce this ministry method, this resource, this tool, uh, and, and contribute to this broader conversation is, is actually the creator of Story of the Soul. And you may recognize him if you've been with the East Asia ministry for more than a year. Uh, you may recognize him as one of our speakers from our East Asia All Staff Gathering last January. Uh, he's served on staff with crew for decades, uh, many of them overseas. 
in Hungary for uh, almost two decades. Right now, he's the national director for church movements with crew in the United States and uh, also happens to be my dad. And so uh, we're excited to welcome Dave Robinson to the call. And uh, yeah, let's just really, let's really talk. great to be with you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, uh, Dave, I'll, I'll call him Dave. So it's not weird for other people. Right. Uh, t tell us about Story of the Soul, specifically about why and how Story of the Soul as a concept was created. What was the what was the need or the opportunity that you and your teams identified that kind of birthed it? Well, it's a great question. It, it really, for me, begins in the home. So when Karen and I were raising our family, we wanted to expose our kids to um, the culture so that they could get to know the heart of man and how hurt and broken it was so that they could learn to create bridges from the heart of man to culture that expresses that heart very well, especially in the arts, and then connect it from the heart to culture to the gospel, because we valued connecting um, uh, with relevance and compassion to to the lost. And so we exposed our kids to movies and music and art like some of your parents I'm sure did. And we would always say, hey, why do you think the songwriter said it that way? Or why do you think that camera angle was that or whatever? It started with this interest in the arts because we were so compelled by them. And what we discovered, what I discovered over time is, is that what we were reading and what we were viewing and what we were listening to was connected. And I was just struck by mankind being constantly bombarded in a, in a really cool way, mankind persisting and telling the same stories again and again, and again, cross-culturally for eons, uh, you know, basically saying the same thing. And, and it looked like they were, uh, the classics were, were created or pop culture was created in such a way that that they became popular or they became classics because they expressed the heart of man so well in two areas, the wounds of man and the longings of man. And so um, we started saying, you know, why, what is, what are people hearing uh, from the soul of man? And we came up with this idea as a, a promo idea is that, you know, the soul is trying to say something. What do you hear? And we wanted to create an opportunity for people to come together over the arts and, um, and say, what do you hear the soul of man saying? And what I noticed over time, and I'll, I'll be brief here, but, you know, uh, Chinese people like Huckleberry Finn, Americans like, uh, you know, you know, uh, French impressionists, you know, we all like Rembrandt, the Dutch, Virginia Woolf. We like Dostoevsky and, and we share the classics globally because they state uh, things that we all feel so well, especially as a wound that goes unhealed or a longing that goes unmet, and they become classics. So this is kind of where it started, Ab. I, I don't know if I've really answered your question, but it started with the thought of there's a connection uh, cross-culturally with the arts. They're saying the same thing. And Probably they're saying it all the time because they don't know how to end the story. They don't, they don't, it does, it's all stories in, in the gospel. Wounds need to be healed. Longings need to be satisfied. They aren't. So they just keep saying them over and over and over again. I love that way of thinking of approaching the lost. So uh, break it down for us a little bit more in, in detail now. Tell us what is story of the soul? Maybe talk us through what it is. Uh, what a story of the soul event looks like, um, and and how you've how you've seen it work just a little bit. So, story of the soul. Um, story of the soul is a coffee house. It's an interactive coffee house experience where we discover the kinds of longings uh, and wounds by that I've been talking about by taking a very thoughtful look at different art mediums, film, music poetry, classical literature, history. The arts show us that the soul is trying to say something meaningful about life. And at the, at the coffee house event, Story of the Soul, we take a contemplative look 
at these various forms of, of art and try to connect it to the gospel. So at, at a story of the soul, you'll have an MC, they'll, they'll introduce it uh, with a really cool Beatles clip or a Billie Eilish clip that we've created that, that kind of pulls them in that starts, starts them contemplating about the soul. Somebody pops up. It's very bohemian. If you know what that means, it's kind of a coffee house, New York city, Bob Dylan esque John, John, John is Joplin or when the poet beat poets would get up and, and speak and they would rattle back and forth with the audience. It's kind of like that, but you train the people to do it. It's very easy to train them, but you have a presenter that sp- presents something for like one or two or three minutes and they show a piece of art then you take 10 or 15 minutes to talk about that piece of art. Then another presenter gets up, shows another piece of art, a poem this time, maybe music first time, poetry the next time. Then you talk about it through very thoughtful discussions. There's a third piece, you, and then you talk about it. And then the fourth one gets up and ties it together. When we write a story of the soul script, there's about 100 globally out there. I can point you to them in a second, but you can learn to write them yourself, and it's awesome. The, the, we, the writers always try to find an emotional storyline to hang the whole story, the whole night on. And so you either pick a wound or a longing. Uh, we're going to demonstrate a little bit of one to you later, but every time you, you interact with that art for that brief you know, 10 minutes or five minutes, you you uh, you're hit with something and you don't know what it is. It's a one. It's, it's very, very deep. And you contemplate, you talk, you get close with people really fast. The last speaker gets up and goes, Hey, you know, I, I've really enjoyed tonight. I know you, I've seen you all doing it too at your tables and, and over your beer or your wine, if, if that's appropriate, some in your, it was created in Europe. And so we started in a bar and um, the, <laughs> the, uh, The last speaker gets up and says, it seems like the soul of man is saying this. And then they share their own personal testimony that relates to the this of the storyline. I can explain that more later if you'd like, but that's what it looks like. You look at art, you contemplate it privately or in a group, you're watching the same thing. And then you consider it, you know, in a in a coffee house setting in a close circle. And then they pop up and you do it again. You do that three times and in about an hour and 15 minutes. It's you're in and out of just a great emotional experience. You feel enriched and you feel closer to everybody there. And, and uh, hopefully they hear the gospel and that's why we created it. That's really amazing. Well, we're going to, in just a second, we're actually going to have the opportunity to feel a little bit uh, what story the soul looks like. Um, but but maybe before we we go to that, I just want to ask one question that the that the audience is, is asking right now. Um, I know you've used this in a variety of contexts. You've used it on campus. You've used it in church movements. Um, where do you see story of the soul being helpful? Like, what is it helpful in the context of building movements? Where is it best used? Is it a gathering event? Is it an evangelism event? Is it a is it a second conversation in evangelism event? Like, where do you see this being most, yeah. most useful yeah. in the trajectory of building movements? Yeah, I, I, I think it has a, a few places. So uh, where does it fit? So let's say in the process of building spiritual movements, you're always investing in the leaders who are running with you. Um, all the leaders that you're, you're going to constantly be discipling and trying to raise up to become movement catalysts and, and go, you want them to become and stay and remain very motivated, great evangelists. And because the arts will never go away and because it's global, every society has the arts and they revere their arts, their, their sculptures, their poets, their musicians, their, their architects, whatever. Because that's true, it's so transferable into culture, but if you went through the process of writing a script, uh, and that's what we call it, everybody involved in that process becomes a better evangelist, I promise. So it starts there. But in terms of, um, of movement building, 
every time somebody comes to one of these, they say, we should do this every month. We should do this every week. And I would recommend that because they're, they're, they take a little bit to produce. I, I would say three to five times a year would be plenty. It's kind of a momentum event. Um, but uh, it, you train your people to do it. You bring in a lot of people that would go like, hey, uh, I, I, I want to come to an event like this. This is cool. And, and uh, I know we're trying to, we're, we're identifying what's going on in the soul of man, but what do you hear? It's like, I can be as personal as I want in my circle or not, but it seems like that soul is saying this and they, they can either hide and, and share their own soul stories for, and nobody ever does. They always empty out their heart. But um, you, we've seen a lot of conversions at Story of the Soul events. Follow-up is easy. Um, so I don't know if I'm answering your, your question, but where we do them is we've done them in churches on Sunday night, but they started in coffee houses and bars in Europe. And uh, you can, you can you, we, we went from Hungary to Russia to Croatia to France, Italy, Poland, Serbia, England. A guy, a guy in England just we just uh, rebranded re the story of the soul uh, and the JFP Jesus film. I can show you where it is on JFP.org. Shows you how to write a script. But uh, the uh, the new regional camp director for all of Europe read read the the piece on JFP's page, and he goes, "Why have I never heard about this?" And he's already trained everybody in Europe on it. And it stays relevant because art is relevant, you know, but I, am I answering your question? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. So what I hear you saying is this is, this is a momentum builder. It's useful for gathering people and then continuing to follow up. And I can actually attest to how, how we've seen that work uh, in a Chinese context. Uh, we, so we adapted this tool on a team that we used uh, a few years ago and, and uh, what was really cool is we use this as an event to, to gather uh, all the friends that we had been making and make new ones because we were able to advertise in it as an event. It was kind of part English corner, part just discussion. And, and people came and uh, we were shocked at the, the level at which Chinese students who we typically think of as reserved were willing to share because of what media clips and poetry drew out of them. And the, the very coolest part was we hosted a few of these events over the course of a few months. And at the end, our Chinese students created one all on their own with Chinese music, Chinese video uh, media, um, and, and told the story of the soul from a Chinese perspective. Um, and, uh, and so we saw our, our students grow uh, in their evangelistic heart and ability as well, connecting it to their, their own culture. Well, so that we can get a feel for what a story of the soul feels like. And, and I also know that you've done this virtually. And so maybe we'll have an opportunity to hear about that here in a second, but so that we can get a feel for how story of the soul feels, even in this virtual context, um, we're going to do like one story of the soul segment together so that we can just feel it a little bit. And so we have actually a, a clip from a, a TV show that we're going to show. And um, we're going to facilitate a little bit of live discussion afterwards. And so um, I I'm going to set up this, this clip for us. So what we're about to watch is, is about a four-minute scene from a, a TV show called Modern Love. I don't know if anybody's seen it. I haven't watched it personally. Apparently, it's on Amazon Prime. Prime. But this is from a clip uh, from a show called Modern Love. And this show features multiple award-winning actors and actresses, people like Anne Hathaway, Tina Fey, Dev Patel, and many more. Uh, it's based on a New York Times column uh, that explores human connection. That, that's the, that's the, the theme of the column, and then the show is based on it. And in the scene that we're about to watch, uh, the character Lexi, who's played by Anne Hathaway, is interacting with a co-worker, uh, Sylvia, who, who she wishes she could be friends with. Uh, Sylvia is played by Quincy Tyler Bernstein. And in previous scenes, uh, we've gotten to know Lexi or Anne Hathaway's character a little bit more. We, we've learned that she is bipolar. And in the scenes 
immediately previous to, to the one we're about to watch, she's, she's had a terrible night uh, where she's had an extreme low with a, with a ruined date. And so we're going to watch this four minute clip now. And uh, afterwards, we're going to discuss it a little bit, uh, just like we would if we were either sitting face to face or honestly, if we were uh, even in a, in a virtual story, the soul environment, we're going to discuss it. So we're going to go to that clip now. Your supermarket boy? How's that going, by the way? Oh, uh, that didn't take. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You really get through them, don't you? I guess it looks like that. Well, I guess you're only young once. I'm bipolar. Really? Yes. I have been since I was 15. How come you never told me? <laughs> Well, who wants to hire someone with a mental illness and entertainment law? Aren't we crazy enough? Sorry. So why are you telling me now? Because you're more than work. And you should know what you're dealing with if we're gonna see each other outside of the office, which I would like. But I have incredibly low periods. So low that I can barely move. I am impossible to be around. I uh, can barely answer the phone. I'm totally unreliable as a friend. In fact, in some ways, I'm probably the worst friend you could ever have. Uh, don't check a single box. I have a meeting five minutes ago. OK. Phyllis, hey, those guys from admin in my office, tell them we have to cancel today. I'll see them tomorrow. Yeah, and I'll tell them I'm really sorry. You want to get lunch? Mm-hmm. I get a menu. So where are you right now, mood-wise? I'm coming off of a low. Tonight I'll be pretty manic. You're the first person I've ever told about this. How does it feel telling me? Elephant's taken one of its feet off my chest. <laughs> I'm so glad you've told me. It explains so much. If anything, not knowing made it a little difficult to connect with you fully the way I would have wanted. So you want to get a drink sometime? <laughs> You want to go to the movies? You want to see people? All of the above. You are the most fun I've ever been around. I'm not letting that go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing what trusting one true friend in your life can do. I've never seen that show. And I, I don't even know those characters beyond this scene. And uh, even watching it, I'm brought to tears because I can relate to the freedom that it feels to, to tell somebody something for the first time and, and to feel accepted in spite of something that I thought might result in rejection. And so um, we're gonna put some discussion questions up right now and, and again, just imagine that right now you and I are at a Story of the Soul event, uh, maybe even virtually. Um, this would be the time that we would split out into to breakout rooms or, or if we're around a table that we would kind of go to discussion in small groups. Um, and so for our purposes today, we're not going to go to breakout rooms. We're just going to stay in a big group. Um, but but actually want to invite some, some live uh, interaction right now in, in two ways. One is uh, invite you to unmute your mic and and maybe share briefly. You can you can imagine that you're sitting at a table with with students. What kind of answers might you hear to, to some of these questions? Uh, maybe you have an answer yourself, and and you can share that too. And and uh, so you see them here. You say that Lexi Ann Hathaway's character says it's amazing what trusting one true friend in your life can do. Agree or disagree, and why? 
what difference does it make when we experience being understood and accepted for who we are? How have you experienced or not experienced that? Why do we sometimes hide our real self from others? Um, so I invite you now to unmute your microphone and say, what, what kinds of responses do you think this might elicit from students or what does it even elicit for you maybe? She didn't say that now everything was better, but it was just a little bit better by sharing that with her friend. And I've personally also experienced that feeling of sharing something where you're not sure how it's going to be received. And when they respond in compassion, it just feels a little bit better. Thanks for sharing that, Kayla. Maybe one or two more people. The uh, I can moment I really connected with was when she said like, hey, tell him I can't make the meeting. And then Lexi gasped, like just that shock. I was like that gasp was like, for me, the most significant powerful moment of the clip because I'm like, because I've done that gasp, maybe internally more so, but I, I know that gasp really well. Thanks, Matt. I think somebody else was about to unmute as well. Why don't you go ahead? Oh yeah, I can share. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think this is more for question three, but kind of what Matt was saying about when she just, when she picked up her phone, my stomach sank a little bit because I'm like, I've had the moment where I shared something that the person I shared it with could not relate with. Mm. And it just feels maybe more embarrassing of like this problem I'm already struggling with and you actually don't know what I'm talking about it makes me feel more isolated, like a strange alien or an idiot or like super judged. But then the moment when like she put down the phone, she said, I can't make it that's like one of the sweetest of like when someone's like me too or you're not crazy that's super normal or I've been struggling with this or even like I've had a moment where I shared something that they've never shared but because I shared it they were able to open up um, and I've been on the other side of that too like because someone was vulnerable enough to share this thing they were struggling with I was able to be like I've actually never told anybody this but me too so I feel like I was kind of in this moment watching that being like, I've been that person in this situation, I've been this person in that. So it felt cool. Just the power of turning your phone over on the table or clicking it off, silencing it is just really cool. Yeah, that was really powerful. Thanks, Jess. Really powerful to see her make the decisions like, nope, I'm going to give you my attention now. And then even though she couldn't relate, she, you know, she wasn't bipolar herself. She just asked questions to try to understand more. So Tell me where you are, whatever. Um, we, we, we're going to go to some more audience questions. And so keep kind of going back to the mentee and upvoting things that you feel like, oh, I'd like to hear more about that. Um, but Dave, could you tell us just uh, whether it's in this particular story, the soul that this clip was used in or, or in uh, other ones, how, how would you transition to the gospel uh, from, you know, this clip, this discussion, or, or this, this theme? Yeah, the way we transition this time is um, uh, it, it, the, the speaker basically said, um, I'm here, do you see me? Because all the pieces in this particular story of the soul said that. The team that put the, 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 the script together chose a Billie Eilish song, a Maya Angelou, Angelou poem, Caged Bird, and then the modern film clip. And so the, the speaker goes back to the art that we just said, say like when she wrote her poem, almost certainly Maya Angelou had fresh in her mind images of a black man carrying signs of protest that read, I am a man, uh, but I feel like I'm a caged bird. And then they would say something like, I'm here, do you see me? And then refer to Billie Eilish's song, I'm here, do you see me? And do you relate to Anne Hathaway's character making herself known when she says I'm bipolar and will you still put the phone down and, and not reject me? Um, and then we, we went from there to this is our greatest fear mm -hmm. to be being known and, and fully rejected. You, you see our desire to be loved often moves us to hide. And so that puts us in a real conundrum, despite all that culture tells us about this is me, be your true self, love yourself. Uh, we intuitively know that this is a problem. This is a, there's a part of us that says, yeah, that's, 
that's right, I am something special and worthy of love. But when we also are keen, we're also cleanly aware that the real ugliness and cruelty and selfishness and hate that seems to live inside us. So basically you can see where I'm going. I, I, we, we basically had Lee, the guy who did this, just tell his testimony of how he felt accepted by Christ and turned it to the gospel and then gave people an opportunity to be loved and noticed and recognized uh, by Jesus. And, and there were actually on this, when we did virtually 80 students from, you know, Midwest campuses in the United States and four trusted Christ in it, but you know, it just made a transition to the gospel that way. That, that feels so natural uh, once people have shared to, to connect the, the longings of the human heart to the gospel. And like you said at the beginning, all stories really end and, and find their consummation in, in the story of the gospel. Well, I want to go to an audience question. It's kind of our, our top upvoted one right now. And, and you just referenced it, actually. You talked about how this was originally birthed as a coffee house live, you know, in-person discussion. But how, how have you have you been a part of thing a story of the soul event that's been adapted for a, a virtual context and and how did that work and how did it go? Yeah, one of the blessings of of uh, that came out of the COVID season that we still are kind of in uh, was that the church movements and the campus partnership here in the United States is really strong and um, that we did a, a partnership with JFP campus and church movements. I've been working with JFP to you know, do some fun things on their app with Story of the Soul. And um, to be honest, I mean, it took the campus people and the Zoom experts like, like JB here or, or somebody in global church movements or, or campus. We all came together and they talked about Instagram promotion. And I didn't know how to do that, but they did. But we created little 30 second films to put on Instagram and TikTok and other places recruited that way. And it worked like a charm, just like this is. I mean, we put people in virtual breakout rooms for the more intimate, you know, circles because, you know, you can imagine the coffee house scene in virtually easily when you can go to breakout rooms. And so, um, you know, we had four presenters and it worked really great. Uh, uh, we were really surprised that the, the virtual recruiting work, but there was a crowd from Texas to Virginia to South Dakota to Kansas City there. And everybody got followed up because they were invited by somebody that knew them. It worked great. It really, there was, it was a no-brainer. Of course, there's a, a lot of bells and whistles to doing what, what is being done even on this call behind the scenes. When you put film on, it's got to be done a certain way. And everybody's speaker has got to be able to hear it. So there's a little, little, little difficulty to work that out. But if somebody, and I'm sure you're on your teams, you young people uh, have, have <laughs> experts uh, that can figure that out. And we, we put them on the team and they brought the crowd and, and uh, the script writers were from Florida, St. Louis and Kansas city. The presenters were from all over and the script writers weren't seen at all. Uh, it, we, they, the campus people picked uh, who the presenters would be and who the, would give the gospel. And, you know, it worked out really great. I, I'm, we want to do this more and more. JFP was so impressed. Uh, they're making a big hubbub about it right now and, and uh, doing a training on how to do it virtually. So that we're in the middle of writing that right now. Well, that kind of relates to our next question, and, and you don't have to answer this for how do you do it in a virtual or how do you train to do it in a virtual context. Uh, but but just this, uh, what are the, and this can be really brief because I know that there are resources available online. Uh, what are the steps that, that somebody would need to take to write their own story of the soul? Could I show you where it is online? We actually or just have, say, we can put it, you can say it's on the Jesus Film website, but we actually have the ability to, to send a quick blast to this whole group uh, with the link to, to the Jesus Film project. Yeah. So how do you write one? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just briefly. So, so briefly, you get four or five people on a team that you, you kind of feel like they're the ones that need to write it. 
and you 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 go through a, a process of everybody naming two two pieces of art that they would go back and watch or listen to, like music or a film scene or uh, uh, a, you know Netflix clip or a historical event or a paragraph from a classic literature story that you would go back to again and again and again because it just grabs your grips your soul. And so you have a really fun fellowship, your Coke and popcorn or pizza or whatever, and everybody's sitting around talking and you're writing down, you know, what, what clips or whatever people are saying. You go through a couple of rounds of that. And then you start, then you ask, what, what is the soul saying in, in these things? And then you write down an emotive storyline uh, that tries to tie them both together. Then you vote on which three pieces you're going to pick out of the 20 that you've mentioned or whatever. And you say to you remind each other, Hey, sorry, we didn't pick yours this time, but we have, you know, we have three or four stories of the soul right here. And so you, again, you just, you talk and you share and you cry and you show your pieces and, and it's just a rich fellowship. Uh, you, you, create a storyline from it, like the soul of man wants to change the world, you know, wants to leave it a better place when he's gone. And what, what, what clip says that, what poem says that, what Bob Dylan song says that, whatever, what Huckleberry friend scene says, I want to change the world or what darkness is or what jealousy is or, or what hate is or how to overcome fear or loneliness or why does everybody want to give second chances? There, there's so many storylines. But we, we, we reduce the storyline to a phrase and make sure that that phrase is the coat hanger all these pieces can hang on. And then we entrust to, uh, then we go look for who's got the ability to turn these three pieces of art to the gospel in a natural way, in an honest way, who's, who's got a testimony like this. And we find them and they add it to the script. We put it all together and you're off to the races. You just got to get people there. Uh, so. That's that's amazing. I, I've been a part of writing these and it, it really is fun. Uh, and kind of like you said at the beginning, I feel like I, I become a better evangelist even in the process of creating because I'm forced to think about where does the gospel of Jesus connect to this part of life and this part of life and this part of life? And it's actually why... We saw it be so successful with Chinese students. One of the problems that we saw that we faced with Chinese students is a, a total apathy towards spiritual things. And that like that Jesus guy, like he's just not connected to my life in any way. And Story of the Soul really built a bridge to say that the gospel connects to all parts of life. And so I actually have another audience question that I want to show. Uh, and that is. Uh, and, and you've already spoken to some of this, but, and you can maybe just speak to principle here because we're in Thailand and I know you're not uh, a Thai culture expert, but how do you contextualize this? Uh, how could you create one for Chinese, uh, for Thai students? And how, how, what did you do in China? I, I could speak to that in a second, but um, you could just even speak to principles of how do you, how do you contextualize this for, for culture? Um, so it was created in Hungary. So it wasn't even created in America. So the Hungarians would talk about their art, their poetry. Every culture, I've already said it, has art. And so if you, you go through the principles of what is the soul trying to say there? And, and, and then you, it's like, yeah, let's talk about that. And you have fun talking about it. You, you, you write down the essence of what people are saying. Uh, so it's it's already contextualized if you're picking their art and 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 having them comment on it. And then you 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 edit that that those those ideas and that that soulish felt response to each of the pieces of art that um, and then you just start writing. But don't don't be don't be hesitant to use international culture either, because you know how everybody's international. I mean, I, I went to a Bob Dylan concert in a soccer stadium in Budapest in 1990. And 
the guy next to me is singing every single song uh, with heart, perfect English. And I started speaking to him in Hungarian. I go, God, your English is great. And, and he goes, I don't speak English. And I go, what do you mean? I, I go, you're singing every song. Your English is perfect. He goes, I just love what my soul feels when Bob Dylan sings and the rhythm and the foot. It sounds Hungarian to me. And I've learned every song. You know, so it's like, wow. I mean, you know, just just don't be afraid to use international pop culture. Pop means popular. It's it, it became popular because it's an early classic. You know, it may not become a classic because it may not stand the test of time, but it's it's a classic for a moment. And uh, so so we use classic and pop culture from all over the world. So. I don't know if I've answered your question. But. No, I think that's a perfect answer. I, I think I think what what I hear you saying is that two things are possible. One is as we learn about the culture that we're in, we can say, "Wow, we're learning. We're learning the stories. We're learning the literature, the po- poetry, the the history, the um, you know, the films, uh, the music from from maybe the place that we're okay. living." Also, keeping in mind though that that uh, I love BTS. And the last two Academy Award winning, uh, you know, best picture films came out of Korea. Um, and, and so th- we really do share right. a, a global culture. Um, yeah. One, one, one more thought, too. As you study the Thai culture, find out why they like those artists or, or find out the rhythm of their soul. Like Hungary is a melancholy culture um, and their rhythm uh, it, it is from poetry. And so language will tell you a lot about their culture. And sometimes you can even do a, a story of the soul. One presentation could be on Thai slang. I mean, it's like, where, what's the soul saying is why you use slang. We've done that in English and, you know, just find out who their heroes are and put them on stage. And ask questions. What does your soul feel when you hear that, or say that, or sing that, or watch that? You know? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's really helpful. Well, we're just going to take one or two more questions here, and and then we're going to kind of wrap it up. Um, but but really briefly, and I, you've also touched on this kind of. But how do you follow up from an event like this? Like, what kind of feedback do you get, and and how do you kind of follow up from it? So um, virtually, we had a URL code and we had everybody plug into it. And we, we just followed up with Zoom calls or campus visits if they were on campus. We, in a virtual coffee house, we always say, hey, we would like your feedback. Um, and if we have people like I know you have in your midst, very talented people, we wouldn't do it with paper. We would do it with texting. But but in the when it was created, we just gave little, you know, uh, uh, the story of the soul logo with a little writing space and said, "Tell us what you thought. Uh, tell us what kind of art you're interested in. Would you ever want to be on a team writing one? And did does this make sense to you? And if you'd like to give us your name, number, phone, email, please do. And I always say, um, and if you made a decision to. Uh, investigate Christ or put your one investigate a relationship with Jesus or you said that prayer with the presenter uh, circle your name if you would and and we would like to get together with you and talk about what's going on in your heart and and follow-up's been really easy M- most people you know some in a, in a in a situation like that people are so surprised that they got to shared their heart and got close with people in a circle. And so you got to, you got to jump on the follow-up right away. You know, soon we always just say within 24 hours and I still say that, but you got to pl- the, the, the event being over is the beginning of the outreach. I always say that just, you got to have a follow-up plan. So I'm, I really appreciate the question. And, and I would just say, Hey, there's going to be a group of us going out for coffee. You know, if you'd like to come, come, and those who put their information on the apparatus that you use for follow-up, of course, you can follow them up individually. And that that's we've we've seen a lot of decisions for Christ and great follow-up this way all over the world. 
That's really cool. That's really cool to hear. Uh, and I, and I'll testify too to to kind of when we saw this used in a in a Chinese context, um, people that that uh, that we had kind of like filtered out of our like evangelistic conversations that we had almost kind of like written off as like I don't think this person is spiritually open or, or interested. When they came to an event like this, we literally got comments like, "I had no idea." that the story of Jesus connected to life in this way. That was the kind of feedback that we got. Um, and it provided for unbelievable follow-up gospel conversations with people. And so as we think about whether it's having story of the soul as like a momentum gathering event uh, or, or a way to say, hey, how can we surface and generate uh, create open conversations around meaningful topics that get us to the gospel. Uh, it really uh, has, we've seen it move us forward uh, in that way in China. Um, last kind of added benefit that came to mind for me too, um, even being foreigners working in a, in an international context, you know, some of the things that, that, uh, we're able to do like, uh, walk onto campus or, or advertise an English corner and, and people want to come to those events or they want to interact with us because, Hey, like, that's interesting that you're a, that you're a Westerner. Um, one of the challenges that we faced in China was that method of collecting contacts was not necessarily replicable by national staff. Uh, they, they're not that interesting to students just to walk on and say, Ooh, do you want to be my friend? It's, it's maybe easy for us. But, but we saw Chinese students and staff able to, to create and host these events with no need to use uh, Americans as the uh, the attractive force uh, to attend that thing. I'm even thinking back to a call that I was on early in the year with some Bangkok staff who had done a survey on one of their campuses where they gave uh, options of like, what are you interested in? Like, what kinds of things are you interested in? And some of the top things that they listed were uh, music and, and talking with friends. And I thought, wow, story of the soul is at least two of those things. And so, um, yeah, we've seen this uh, work really well. Uh, well, I'm going to wrap it up here, but I just want to close by by asking you, Dave, is there anything else that we didn't get a chance to ask you, but you really would like to share about uh, evangelism, story of the soul, the need for creativity and evangelism, just a, a parting uh, word or thought? Yeah, yeah. Um... Just one technical thing about story of the soul that whenever you choose to look at this and how to write one, the most critical thing about story of the soul is great discussion questions that that follow up the film because they're immediately connected to the film. And if the, the, the first question you ask is hard to answer, you're dead and, and just ask good questions. But y'all, I mean. You know, I'm, I've been around for a long time and, and, and staying motivated for evangelism is, is the most important thing that you can do. And, and as missionaries uh, at, that live in an apostolic way, like you are as sent ones and uh, my hat's off to you. And I don't know if you're struggling with motivation right now or, or whatever, but hopefully this will just encourage you a little bit that there's a lot of ways to, to share your faith. And I want to encourage you to be open because the reality is that, that people without Christ have no dawn. That's what Isaiah 8 says. They, they have no morning light, no, no hope. And we have to live like we know that to be true, that they're really in a dilemma. They're not connected to their creator uh, they, they can't possibly be happy uh, deep in their souls because they were created for him, by him, through him. And if they're not connected to him, there's no way they can be uh, all they're meant to be. And so just take a risk, open up your mouth, keep open up your mouth and, and let people know that, that, that God loves them. And it's OK to blow it, trying to open your mouth. Uh, you're, you're not going to always have a great transition or, or whatever, but good soil will eventually always respond and bad soil always won't. So you can't, you can't fail to be honest. 
I can't tell you how many times uh, people try to witness to me in high school when I was a hippie and smoking pot and all that stuff. And, and they thought, I'm sure Dave Robinson hates my guts because they, they tried. And that whole time I rejected them. Uh, I was good soil and I came to Christ. And, and so you gotta, you gotta have the long view. You gotta have the promises of God in your heart that, that, that people need the God. I know, you know, this, but stay motivated. And, and I was, I'll close with this thought. And I, I was in Isaiah recently and, Mm -hmm. and if you read the vivid language and poetry of Isaiah, uh, there's a lot of bad news, uh, in, in Isaiah, especially how mankind looks at God and the greatest motivation that we can have moving the gospel forward is that God deserves the honor and the glory and the adoration and the respect and the allegiance of every living soul. He doesn't deserve to be ignored, uh, cussed at, rejected, and he doesn't have all the honor. So let's, let's get out there and, and let him know. Last thought, Isaiah 26.10 answers one of the greatest questions you could ever ask. Why does man persist in, in rebellion? And it says, because he does, not, he does not perceive the majesty of God. The reason why man doesn't know God, the reason why he persists in stupid, ridiculous living, is because he doesn't perceive the majesty of God our witness and our testimony, our lives and our love for one another and community with each other will help them perceive it. And they'll gladly surrender just like you and I do. Thanks so much, Dave. Really appreciate you being with us. And thanks for that, that uh, word of encouragement and, and exhortation to, to persevere in evangelism. We are in a hard context right now. It's hard to know what to do. And so that really helps me. Uh, to remember that when we talk about evangelism, we are talking about real people, real Thai people who are right now separated from their creator, who have no dawn, uh, who are headed for an eternity of separation from God. Uh, And so that's why we talk about these things. And so really appreciate you being with us. Uh, And, you know, you guys are, you guys are my heroes. Press on. I mean, I, I, I know some of, I know some of you had the kind of year, year and a half or whatever that, Abby and JV had and some of the others on And my goodness, I mean, praise God. Just press on. You're faithful. Way to go. You're my hero. I mean it. Thanks. Thanks. That's really encouraging. Uh, and uh, so really appreciate you being with us. Uh, well, we're going to wrap up here. And so to, to close this learning loop, I'm just going to ask everybody to hop on Menti one last time. Uh, and, and in just a few brief words, maybe post a key takeaway from this time. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to wrap up here and uh, hope that you guys have been able to be encouraged, maybe given a new idea, maybe this sparks something for your team. Maybe this sparks a way that you can uh, utilize the English corners that you're already doing to, to build better bridges to gospel conversations. Maybe this sparks an idea to, to advertise virtually for a, a virtual event that could in turn uh, become personal and one-on-one conversations. I was really encouraged to hear about a, a virtual story of the soul that that was it included students from multiple states that then filtered back to the the campuses that they uh, they came from um, for the the staff there to to follow up and so uh, yeah we just want to invite people to post just in a few words one key takeaway there on uh, there on Menti and uh, we'll wrap up well we're really grateful. Um, Next time, I know we said this last time, actually, and appreciate you guys rolling with the change in topic for this time. Uh, but next time, we're actually going to focus on uh, how to communicate the gospel to Thai students. And uh, the person that we have lined up uh, to share with us here in not two weeks because of Thanksgiving, but three weeks, uh, is the creator, actually, of the Thai Gospel Tools app uh, that many of you are already using. So the creator of that app 
is uh, is going to join us and is going to share maybe just a few key uh, ways that he uh, shares the gospel with with Thai students, and then we'll have the opportunity for for interaction once again. Um, so just going to look at some of these takeaways. Uh, definitely want to try this maybe at an English corner. Uh, take away every story points to the gospel. Yes, we can we can talk about the gospel from any place in conversation or life because the gospel points. Uh, every story points to the gospel. Uh, don't be afraid to bear your soul. It might encourage others. Every longing or wound in the soul finds its end in the gospel. Yes, uh, the ability to train local students and staff to connect with the heart longings of the Thai student. What an encouraging thing. Uh, somebody's encouraged by by even Dave's personal testimony that, that he rejected the gospel many times, but was always good soul. Um, that's good to remember as I talk to students who seem uninterested. Um, clips and songs can provide such good discussion, can cause people to open up and be vulnerable. So true. It's amazing what, what art can do. Many of us have already experienced this too, as we've used tools like Solarium, where somehow the, the existence of kind of like a third thing between the two of us to kind of draw out conversation really seems to change uh, people's ability to open up. Um, we'll really appreciate seeing these takeaways. You guys really encouraged to be with you this morning. Let, let's keep receiving our missional moment from God as we learn together in order to bless the world. Uh, we, we really love sitting in the missional challenges with you uh, and hope to see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.